Well, the weather today here in Howendale Beach, a far cry from the City of Light, Pegasus here. A few weeks ago, beautiful Friday afternoon on this May the 29th, Gulfstream Park through the years with that virtual yearbook, writing a new chapter, of course, currently in the mix here. And Run Happy, we've got his branding all over the place, and we're looking forward here tomorrow afternoon, not only our return to the turf, and that double-wide Gulfstream Park turf course just looks about as lush and green as it could be, and we'll have a quartet of turf races beginning at about 2.15 Eastern with the opening turf race, the fourth this afternoon, but we are excited, Acacia, we were just talking, and it's Jason and Acacia, by the way, here on Gulfstream today, but we are gearing up for our first-ever Gulfstream Park two-year-old runner by run happy in tomorrow's second race a huge supporter of the game and you've likely seen uh, the name run happy at various tracks or events but we love to see the en enthusiasm jim mackinville Mac mattress mac huge as we said huge supporter of the sport of horse racing and as a, a of run happy the stallion so we had one runner already at churchill this will be his first that as you mentioned we'll see here at Gulfstream. and looking forward to seeing how they run they've sold well uh, as yearlings over the last Last year, obviously, we haven't gotten much gauge of the two-year-olds just yet, but pretty exciting as he was about as fast and impressive as a horse could be on the racetrack. Sprint champion back yeah. in 2015. He had won. I mean, his real first claim to fame was that King's Bishop mm -hmm. win, now the H. Allen Jerkins at Saratoga, and that would all ultimately culminate with a Breeders' Cup sprint victory and Eclipse Award as champion sprinter. And that horse tomorrow in the second is named Gruntled for John Service. And I think that underscores not only tomorrow's second race, but the bevy of two-year-old actors action we have here over the next few few days at Gulfstream Park. We've got a couple of baby races in the mix this afternoon, a number of top riders as well, and a new month on the horizon. Can you believe it? I mean, the 1st of June is right around the corner, and with the start of the new month, do note we've got this schedule change regarding our live racing programs here beginning next Wednesday. New post time of 12 p.m. as well, so note that it'll be a bit earlier Wednesday, start Thursday, then Friday. Friday to Sunday, so hopefully you will continue to tune in, as always, on behalf of the entire Gulfstream Park uh, racing family. You know, Jason and I in particular, we really appreciate you watching and wagering and continuing to support Gulfstream Park, and it's great to see uh, all of our horsemen and our horses here have an opportunity to put on such wonderful shows with this top-notch racing. Definitely looking to build even more so mm -hmm. on the success we've had and the quality of racing throughout the months of April and May as this uh, 2020 spring meet rolls full steam ahead unquestionably, and with that, we've had the ever-growing jackpot rainbow guarantee <laughs> which today is as big as it's been in at least the last few weeks at Gulfstream Park. There is a lot of, as they say, scratch in today's <laughs> guarantee. There absolutely is. It is 1.5 million. It starts in race five today. We do have 10 races on the card. Couple, I would say a couple of nervous moments. Yesterday in the last race, <laughs> we had a couple of singles, some big prices throughout the sequence, but the, uh, the pool does live another day, so that guarantee nice and... Uh, Nice and hefty there for you this afternoon. Yeah, what a way to uh, potentially <laughs> cap the month of May. I know it's been for many of us just a very odd and rocky 2020 mm -hmm. collectively as a whole, but that would put a nice exclamation point on things as we gear up. And, of course, other tracks are coming back online. Santa Anita Park, Golden Gate Fields, and looking very much forward to Laurel Park back yeah. in the mix this coming weekend. Absolutely. Maryland Racing back up and running tomorrow. So hope you'll support our sister track. Thrilled for them that they're going to be able to, to get back up and running. And uh, Maryland, if you haven't been, you can't go right now, but one of my favorite tracks really to go to. Oh, it's a great state. Yeah. Went to school in Northern Virginia. I've got a lot of good friends from college many moons ago that are from Maryland. Played lacrosse with a lot of guys. Big fan of Maryland Racing. We'll have Laurel back tomorrow afternoon. What we've got cooking here, a 10-race Friday card. The sun's shining. You saw the live 
Live Scenic Open that we began the broadcast with Acacia. And with that in mind, we do have our opening turf race that plays at least a fifth of this upcoming Friday early pick five. You've got a $32 ticket. I do. We have races one and three off turf. So I'm four deep to start things off in this off the turf opener. I think it's a very tricky race, Jason, and I think the board reflects that as well. Two-year-old maiden claimers. We've got the Phillies in the second. I'm four deep in there as well. A couple of second time starters that look very interesting. The most noteworthy of which is Special Inclusion, who ran well in her debut. I'm just going to stand alone in the third with the 13 combination. I felt like he looked to be the toughest. If I were to use another, it would be Jamaican, the two who's in good form, though he is technically stepping up a bit. But I, I just felt because I wanted to spread in the first couple of legs, I'm going to stand alone with combination today. We've got a nice allowance race in our first turf race. I'm just using the two makers, but that's a pretty quality field as well. And we wrap things up with the two-year-olds in the fifth, two-year-old fillies and special weight company as well. And I'm using Alpha Babe and Pretzel. Pretzel, second yeah. time starter <laughs> for Arendelle, and uh, Arendelle and trainer Juan Alvarado will be busy in races two and five in particular with Pretzel in the cash out leg, and good luck to that horse who you use, one of two you have in the fifth, and let's not forget their second time starting Darla, one of a quartet of runners you have in race number two. In fact, I like... I like the notion uh, and overall construction of your ticket because I think combination is going to be not only a big favorite, but a favorite that's yeah. going to prove uh, in, in all likelihood probably a little bit better than the competition in the third. And my point in referencing him as uh, a favorite I think you can trust uh, races two and one in particular, these are very difficult races. And this yeah. first race, I mean, you're talking about uncharted territory for these Phillies, not only for the most part on the dirt, but then when you dig in a little bit, they've all got to go a mile and a furlong here in the Friday opener. Yeah, they do. And that is a very, I think, a very important key to this in that it's a mile and an eighth. It's a distance a lot of them just haven't gone before. I agree with you. I thought Smart Azar was potentially a player off of her last race. I'm just going to hope that the clash drop for Malibu Run will, will put her in the right spot. She does have Edgar Zayas, I believe, unless there was a jockey change as he was entered to, to ride her for the MTO. But I'm hoping that the clash drop and facing a good field first out, she'll be a bit better today. Yeah, she is an MTO, mm -hmm. and maybe there uh, really needs nothing more to be said for perhaps, that she is entered as a dirt horse and a, uh, at least uh, gives the patina looking at the pedigree, Malibu Moon marquetry, mm -hmm. that she could handle potentially a mile and a furlong or at least outlast the others sure. at this distance. I do like, for, on the, the obvious side of, uh, of things, just the last out dirt race with the four smart as are. Mm -hmm. uh, step forward for trainer David Fox going a mile. We had almost a duality from the race she's coming out of where generic Mark just didn't run and ran too bad to be true, I think, but at least Noble Maria came out of that race mm -hmm. to break her mane, right? It's true, and I was worried as generic Mark and Bella Gianna both were disappointing in their next starts, but it was also both of them having to do an off-the-turf race again, and sometimes those are just so tough to gauge. You are right. We had a, a winner come out in Noble Maria, I think a three-win day for Joseph Trejos mm -hmm. yesterday, which is pretty impressive as well, and he's in the mix with another class dropper in Naturel to the inside I thought that this one, who she hasn't run a step yet, <laughs> but she's been running against much tougher. Five to one in the early betting. He won the uh, the first race here mm -hmm. yesterday, in fact, with Noble Maria. Let's move on to the second race this afternoon. First finish line in the uh, mix as we go from our long to short game, uh, kind of both both ends of the spectrum as we gear up for this four and a half furlong. Two year old Philly, twenty five to twenty thousand dollar maiden claim, and I really think this race ultimately conflates into two different camps and. One corner, you have the likes of the three and a cute name here, Say Cheese. <laughs> really great name for a two-year-old filly, if I do say so myself. Out of grin. I yeah, like out of grin. <laughs> I even missed the damn. I thought the name was cute. It's even better now, out of grin by Adios Charlie. But she's one of two potentially very live firsters you would think are going to run well uh, in the same camp as the two extinguish. And then in the other corner, you've got that quartet of rematching fillies off a race here back on April 30th. The most important, of course, are special inclusion and Darla, who had very different running styles in that race. <laughs> they certainly did. And I thought as we pick it up at the 
quarter pole, special inclusions forwardly placed here. Darla coming off of it in those green Arendelle colors. I know you had been a, a huge fan of social inclusion, and it is pretty cool to see him as a stallion now. But I thought about special inclusion, the takeaway from her race was that she was not done any favors by the inside post. She was a touch green, and she's pretty big. She's one I think is really going to improve second out. But look at Darla, the mm -hmm. eight, closing well. I thought she actually had a nice closing kick to her, which is tough going four and a half furlongs. Is she a little sharper today? I wonder, be, yeah. and and is she the one that really benefits having that race under her belt? Mm -hmm. I'm curious which way special inclusion goes. That's a very good and interesting nugget with her being more or less big bodied mm -hmm. and maybe she, uh, I get both sides of the argument with her. Does she improve and does she take her, her game forward? Or was she cranked up to win first out and maybe doesn't run as well? And then you also, the other part of it is looking at that race, and clearly both Darla and Special Inclusion are major players in this field this mm -hmm. afternoon. I ultimately, my gut feeling and, and my ultimate opinion was this might be a better race just oh, solely agree. due to the presence of the Ravelli Furster and the number two Extinguish, who I picked for Michael Yates. I totally agree. I think top to bottom, it's a bit tougher than what they face. But we have seen, now we're at this time of the year where we can see some horses who have a race under their belt and particularly Mike Yates comes to mind with his second time starters who've done very well. His firsters have done very, very well too. And that's why I went for D because I respect the barn and the work that they do, especially with the two-year-olds. Um, and speaking of two-year-olds, not to belabor the point with Say Cheese, but uh, she's by Adios Charlie. She's kind of the one that you would imagine um, kind of has that established pedigree for him. And her trainer does very well with two-year-olds, too. A show this stat, two-year-old first-time starter. It's just an open-ended stat for Larry Ravelli, as we've been seeing a lot of drop-down runners or layoff horses. He does well with two-year-olds, too, Jason, at about 39%. And on the dirt, he's 8 for 22 yeah. for just under 40%. Mm -hmm. So these are not all synthetic horses that were running off the screen mm -hmm. at Arlington Park. Uh, this is a barn that has, has had success, obviously, in Chicago. That's yeah where Larry is basically based. But again, Horthon on the dirt. He's yeah. just as good and deadly first time out. And uh, say cheese, you would think, with a rod, 26 bucks. Basically, very early on, co-favored or thereabouts with the eight special inclusion in that second race. Now it's Combination's turn to get some, uh, some props here and a little bit of acknowledgement in this off-the-turf 12-5. Friday third race and I mean not to again belabor the point or bore anybody I mean this horse's form it's amazing just how 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 well and strongly he's come on with the addition of blinkers I I just I look at him and there's almost like an amazement because as we all know the game is just so nuanced and in so many areas it's just so complicated with so many shades of gray it's just pretty wild to me with the blinkers added, this horse has been close to unbeaten over his last five races. And when he was beaten two starts back, Ray's Warrior came back to win, and Karen's Cove ran very, very well yesterday in defeat. So he faced some nice horses too back. I think it's also encouraging that no matter who puts the tack on him, he seems to run too. Mm. He, he's just been so consistent, and that was kind of what really pushed him over the edge for me. Um, now he's first off the claim for Safi Joseph Jr. Obviously no problems there with his off the claim numbers and just his over all body of work but you're absolutely right the blinkers have made a world of difference for him i my one gripe with him is is five eights going to be just a touch short that's fair not mm -hmm. to say that he can't do it but i do think his sweet spot is probably around six furlongs he mm -hmm. got the five and a half two back and he just got up i mean he just got up in the last jump is five just a a hair mm -hmm. short he's clearly the class of the field then you've got the two legit speeds down inside who both have big chances yep. in uh, the two jamaican who you prefer over the one our boy Bodie, who i prefer uh, they are uh, two quality horses that make sense but combination going to be a big mm -hmm. favorite there in that friday third race to the turf we go and this uh, turf course has been for the most part scarcely used with all the rain that we've had say over the last uh, couple of weeks i was uh, talking not all that long ago texting with the uh, tony martinez our track superintendent and uh, verbatim he told me this turf course is in awesome shape and he's right. really happy with it and i guess th it's there's always a, a a blessing in disguise you know you hate to lose that many turf races but first of all safety's got to come first mm -hmm. but on the flip side this turf course has gotten plenty of rain from mother nature and a little bit of a break so it should be like a a shaggy carpet this <laughs> afternoon when these fillies go to the post in the fourth 
for it. Oh, that's it. And we're happy to have turf racing back. We are absolutely right. You just have to take the right measures. Horse racing is a game run outside. And so we know we can't control Mother Nature, but it does look in tip top shape. I know we took a look uh, out of, at it this morning. So excited to have turf racing back. And what do you know? We've got two from Mike Maker in our first turf race of the day. Indeed we do. It's very fitting. Absolutely. And they may certainly Hurricane Breeze, I think, is going to be favored in this mm -hmm. spot. In fact, I don't think I can almost guarantee uh, this daughter of Summerfront is going to be a favorite in this race. Claim by Louis Ramirez out of a race will backtrack to mm -hmm. back on January 3rd. Now, in the interim, she has been turned over with Mike Dub, the managing partner, over to Mike Maker. And clearly, she's just a major player in this race. All of her turf races, mind you, for a different trainer, they were all very solid for Brendan Walsh. And she ran against really good company. This race did produce two next out winners. One of them was Elusive Molly, who we did see get beat last time, but her next race after this was incredibly impressive. I will say Hurricane Breeze this day got an absolutely perfect trip and um but taking nothing away from her i thought she ran a huge race this afternoon she faced she's my type and osaka girl and that very tough maiden race prior to that so i, I think that she's a legitimate very big player in here given some time i did though give a little bit of a nod to sunset promise just thinking as far as company face since she broke her maiden yep. with, with the exception of that last race she's almost exclusively been facing stakes company and some top horses she's got two potentially good fillies for the mm -hmm. level in Toffin and hurricane breeze her stable yep. mate down towards the inside but as far as who's got the designer races on her resume who's got the sexiest looking yeah. fields and all that it's not debatable it is absolutely Absolutely the six sunset promise. We'll see how she does that second half of the Mike Maker one two punch in that fourth race. As we take a little time out, we'll be back with the fifth. We chase 1.5 mil in the rainbow. And we're back on the afternoon. Those the uh, the palm trees here at Gulfstream Park, absolutely synonymous just with the background, the fabric of South Florida. Going strong here since February 2nd, 1939. And very excited and happy to be back on the turf this afternoon. Again, the grass racing with that lush course begins in the fourth at around a quarter after two Eastern. And we've got three turf races, in fact, Acacia, coming down the pike in this jackpot Rainbow Six. We've also got the Gulfstream Park guru who gets the green around here, pun intended, with the <laughs> turf racing. Ron Nicoletti up at our Beat the Expert. The one and only. He's out. This will be the swan song for Beat the Expert for a little while, but don't worry. It will be back, but we hope you do join in the fun today. We always have a couple hundred people play every week, and we really appreciate that. It's free to play, so go on over, sign up, and see if you can pick more winners than Ronnie. 1.5 mil, the jackpot Rainbow Six guarantee. Three turf races in the mix. A two-year-old made in special weight for Phillies in the opening leg. How's the ticket looking, Acacia? I went 57-60 today. No singles in the Rainbow Six because I did want to use four horses in the first leg of the Rainbow. And I actually like, and I've said this before, I like when it starts with maiden races because you can see how the board is playing before you press enter on your ticket. You can see maybe uh, some things you don't like or you do like from these Phillies, is a, a lot of them are first-time starters, and you're not really quite sure what you're going to get. So I used four horses in here, um, and uh, curious of what we're going to see this afternoon with a pretty nice crew. I've got Looking for Roses and Conquistador rematching. I'm using those two in the sixth. Seventh race, um, I think Oak Bluffs is going to get a really nice trip in Me here too. today. So here's hoping the old 10-year-old can get back to the winner's circle this afternoon. Uh, again, we've got a rematch in the eighth with Cyanide are a baby and Flora Fantasy who's been in top form. I don't know about you Jason but I had a very tough time on the ninth this afternoon. I found that to be a 
very, very tricky race. And what do you do with Tweet Away Robin, who was so good? Mm -hmm. We haven't seen her since January, and now she's trying the turf and too deep to wrap things up. Absolutely. And as you wrap things up using the six and seven, which I think are going to be two popular mm -hmm. numbers and <laughs> widely used numbers, it isn't every day, late May, weekday, nightcap, maiden claimer on the dirt. You run across Chad Brown and yep. Christophe Pamont <laughs> with two entrants and with the six Wind Ridge and the seven Super Highway, they're mm. probably 95% of the uh, conversation and that 10th that race, 25 to 20K made in claiming cash out. I use the same two in my late pick five, but that'll start in race number six. Let's talk about this upcoming fifth race where you get a mix of some horses that already have experience, like your top selection, mm -hmm. the eight pretzel, and uh, my horse, the six go, Jojo go, who really went, only the problem was she went without Lionel Reyes in the irons. She's back two weeks after losing Lionel early on in her career debut here on May 14th. And I ultimately, the fact that she was eight to five in that race, that's what won me over this afternoon, hoping mm -hmm. we'd get to see why she was sh such a big favorite first time out. I remember being a bit surprised at the time that she was such a big favorite. A uh, big favorite that afternoon, but she is a very intriguing prospect. And though I did prefer a couple of others, I did not want to get kicked out by her. So I ended up using her on the Rainbow Six because it, it will be interesting to get her uh, to run a race, maybe with the jockey up, as you mentioned. So I found that she was a player. Pretzel comes out of what was actually our first two year old race of the season, where her stable mate, Quinoa Tifa, was very impressive. But I felt looking back at her race that she had the opportunity to move forward. So second time out um, and uh, I'm hoping that that race experience will benefit her uh, and then you've got a couple of firsters that look very intriguing as well in the spot including one for trainer Dermot Magner mm -hmm. who's had a quiet first quarter of 2020 what has he saddled uh, not all that many yeah, horses in fact he's only run yeah 10 or 11 yeah. starters all together but he's in the mix here uh, shipping the three alpha babes south from Palm Meadows getting Paco and I think Paco might be the best telegraph of all that perhaps that daughter of Malibu Moon, I mean, uh, reasonably thinking, you might go, all right, she's a Malibu Moon tis now. She's going to want a little more ground than 5.8s, and maybe she'll be a bit better off, say, in late July or early August as opposed to the uh, the end of May. But with Paco riding, you got to assume she's live. And then we have the nine Jill's a hot mess, owned by Eric Gio, mm -hmm. first uh, starter, I think it's stud for Laubon, who won the uh, Jim so, Dandy yeah. back in uh, 2016, trained by Eric Gio, and, and broke his maiden in the Jim Dandy. He did indeed, and he's actually had some two-year-olds that have gotten some buzz. I've seen a few of them, and uh, Laubon himself, though, he kept obviously top company broke mm -hmm. his maiden in the Jim Dandy he, he doesn't I, I would say it's a little bit tricky with a freshman stallion but he's by Uncle Mo and you do see that image passed on through his fall so I'm excited to see this filly who seems like she's been uh, training pretty well in the mornings here at Gulf Stream. She is a New York bred third fall out of a, uh, a dam that went over for four mm -hmm. but interesting now that Mo is a sire of sires just thinking a Nyquist outwork and Laubon yeah. uh, three horses currently standing at stud as freshman stallions we'll see with Sammy Camacho riding. Halfway home here as we round the far turn with five down and five to go. And looking at my late pick five, I do like the favorite, much like a combination in the third that I think will be pretty tough to beat at a short price. I think Floor Fantasy in the field she's in against this afternoon, given the trip she's likely to pull, where it looks like there's a very honest pace on paper. I think her win streak, and it's been a good one currently, I think there's a very high probability of that continuing. And I build this play around her I knew she was in the eighth and like any strong foundation or you build a home you got to start with the strong base and foundation and I think I have that with her and she's seven to five on the morning line and I've got a $27 play using uh, three horses in the tricky ninth race I've got Kristoff and Chad in the cash out and a three by three in races six and seven this race is a uh, very tricky I thought mm -hmm. Acacia the sixth race I think the upper echelon or the first bullet if you would ask me give me your your biggest uh, pre-race keys in order of the top three I think it would probably concern the five who I picked looking at roses and the number 10 
conquistador who are coming out of the same race here back on May 2nd. In the case of the horse that I picked, I just like that looking at Roses was able to put a lackluster effort behind him two starts back with a strong recent race in the positive fill affair back on May 2nd. I agree with you. I, I thought that looking at Roses could potentially sit a great trip in here given that uh, I feel like there could be some company on the front end for Conquistador who's been very good in his last couple both on turf and dirt which is interesting as well but I, I felt like looking at Roses might be able to take a step forward today. He's got that good closing kick uh, and I think that this could be a nice setup for him in this spot. We've got and you talked about the potential race flow in the sixth and the fact that there seems to be a plethora of speed mm -hmm. types on paper that is probably a great dovetail into our seventh race as we stay on the turf we cut back to five furlongs and I mean you've really got some some fleet footed firepower down towards the rail those two inside posts and two major players to boot who may adversely affect one another on on a negative side of mm -hmm. things if the pace is too fast here between the one goodbye greg and the two apache brave and i think everything falls in line essentially with those two horses who are very legit in their own right just what might happen with them on the front end and clearly you and i like the 10 year old oak bluffs to really get a good trip here and and show that he's still got it getting back on his on his best surface i think that he's definitely going to be happy to be back on the turf and let's not forget our boy evans and island tap to the outside have speed as well yep. so you're kind of going to have it on both sides of him and uh, i think paco lopez fits this horse the best he's ridden him uh, multiple times times and ridden him to a lot of success. He was a reclaim for Mary Epler, uh, who clearly knows this horse well. He also faced tougher company two starts back with the lights of Tiger Blood. So I feel like this might be a good spot for him. And clearly, uh, he's got a tough field in here, but there isn't a Tiger Blood he has to deal with. No, there isn't. I mean, goodbye Greg and Apache Brave yeah. are solid in their Absolutely. own right. They're not at that Tiger Blood level. I do like, though, looking at, again, two major players in this race. And I don't know if you're going to get the 10 to one on Oak Bluffs. I don't think that's going to happen with Paco and people seeing like what we saw that there is a likely very intense speed duel. But you go from him as a 10 year old to the nine year old on the rail by Tufflesburg mm -hmm. and the one goodbye Greg who you've got fourth. I've got second Apache Brave. In your opinion, is he the best speed perhaps in this race? He certainly could be. Blinkers go back on today. He was claimed for Georgina Baxter and ran off of a four month layoff last time and ran very, very well behind the inform uh, fully loaded. I thought it was a good second off the bench. It's been a long time since he's seen the winner's circle. That was the one thing about him, but um, I think that goodbye Greg is definitely the run and gun type. I don't think Apache Brave needs the lead, but I think he's best when he gets it. Now, Flora Fantasy, as we switch gears and we'll move on to our eighth race, and we'll start that final pick three with the second-to-last race on this Fast and Good Friday over the main track. Got a Florida bred three and up Philly Amer allowance optional claimer, and as you work your way through this cast of seven, you get to the outside. You've got, obviously, just a razor-sharp, unbeaten in three starts on the season in Flora Fantasy, who mm. gets another run and another matchup against Sayonara Baby. They put on a good show last time out. They certainly did, separated by half a length there on May 7th, and we have the replay for you, but I thought as we pick it up there around the quarter pole, uh, Sayonara Baby on the lead, and that's kind of what her running style is, uh, with the exception of that turf race two starts back. She's a speed type, and this was definitely, I thought, maybe her best race in a while, but Flora Fantasy would not be denied on the outside. And look, it's a tough ask to have four in a row, and particularly with yet another claim, but she's just about as good as she can be right now. She just, as, as a, as a, just example, like a quick, quick snapshot mm -hmm. of Flora Fantasy. I had used the line the other day with you, uh, many of these Florida breads are not hothouse flowers. <laughs> and that just really, I think, is embodied uh -huh. with the overall work of this six-year-old mare by Cowtown Cat, who's just nine for 30 in her career. Just a very solid horse. In fact, one of two in the race by Cowtown Cat mm -hmm. with the six Bowtown Cat. Now go. with uh, trader Joe Orsino coming out of the same floor fantasy race we just looked at. She's won nine races in her own right. Now we went in different directions for the second spot. I thought the five Mercy side after running against Up in Smoke and even Corey Gal might run a little bit 
better here for Safi as a potential speed with a Misael. You like the three Sayonara baby, so you're going all May 7th, that exact <laughs> a boom carbon copy. I am. Well, I like that she keeps Edgar Zayas. I think that he fits her. There could be some other speed as well. Um, I, I wasn't sure what to do with Mercy's side because her race two starts back. I know that two and three back, she was running against really good competition. Mm -hmm. She was just such, uh, I thought, a disappointing effort to back, so I wasn't sure what to do with her, and I did see some other speed. I thought potentially if there was a little bit more of a pace meltdown, a horse that could grab a share might be the number four assume control at a price. Yeah, for Mike Yates, right? Yeah. She's coming back the four assume control, a little bit of a layoff. Unraced since losing. Mm -hmm. Don't care about how far she was beaten, but looking at Royal Flag, who beat her for Chad, yeah. I think she's going to be who knows what the 2020 older Philly and Mayor division might look mm -hmm. like as far as a series of races. I think that I think that Philly's really good. I think she might be great one quality. Yeah, she was very impressive that day to win yep. by nine. And uh, Remarkable Soul, the third place finisher, came back to win impressively. A couple of next out winners from there, but just visually, I thought a huge effort. Definitely. Here's the ninth. Uh, last turf race on the card. We go with a cast of ten. It's a very difficult yeah. race. I think for me anyway, this entire handicapping puzzle is all predicated, or mostly predicated, on the 11 Swirling Candy, who goes from post nine now, not as far outside, with the, with the scratch, and there will likely be another scratch, assuming this race will be run on the turf, mm -hmm. and there's no rain in the forecast, with the seven memento, a middle-of-the-pack uh, main track only. Does Swirling Candy clear from out there? If she does indeed clear... They might all be running for second money a, a furlong into this race, I think. I, I agree. I think that she's the best horse in here. Blinkers go on. She's got a Rod Ortiz. If she's able to get over, that could just be the end of it. But mm -hmm. I just I, I mentioned this when looking at my pick six ticket. I did not know really where to go in here. And I eventually landed on Poseidon's Passion. Yes, she wired the field last time out, but she came from off of the pace a bit at Tampa to back to win. So she had some versatility. Again, she's got to try to make it four in a row here, which is which is a, a, a tough ask. But I thought that her versatility was what I did like about her. But it's a, a very difficult race. It absolutely is. Probably the biggest key outside of just the overall pace and swirling candy trying to clear with the rod mm -hmm. from the outside is the Mike Maker train number six tweet away Robin who had been claimed for Robert Bone mm -hmm. and by Fernando Abreu on January 24th yet it looks like Robert Bone has brought in a few other mm -hmm. partners <laughs> including Mike Dove and this horse is not Fernando trained by Mike Maker off the claim and going to run on the turf and I had pulled uh, just the stretch because I thought that this was a much talked about race certainly at the time because there was just nobody else around her now she is going out for uh, to try the grass for the first time today out of a stakes place mare who won on turf and there was a sibling who was a four-time turf winner but I mean, it was just her and everybody else that day. Curious to see how she mm -hmm. does. You touched upon the uh, pedigree. I'm sure she's a big player. And what does the five Tony's Rose do in this mm -hmm. spot? Good to see Ken Sweezy. His, his operation continues to grow. Consider him kind of a young gun, not his first rodeo. Mm -hmm. He's trained here the last couple of winters, but a former assistant to Jimmy Jerkins, who now has horses for Robert Evans. That's a big deal and a tonalist homebred. A mm -hmm. little tough to gauge, but... I thought, much like your top pick, I just ultimately felt if Swirling Candy doesn't clear and doesn't get away from, like, the three Trevis and maybe even your top pick, Poseidon's Passion, I felt as though Tony's Rose might just capitalize and get the best trip of anybody up close, ready to pounce. She certainly could. I spent a long time looking at her because and it's, it's tough to gauge. She broke her maiden at Belterra when with Wesley, when with Wesley Ward with the blinkers on, and we haven't seen her since August, but she seems to be training forwardly at Tampa. Um, if sh there is a lot of pace up front. If she runs like she did as a two-year-old, then she's going to have a closing kick. Kind of a different looking, at the time, Wesley Ward type of two-year-old as well. Definitely. I mean, just winning yeah. at Belterra, being a tonalist homebred, more mm -hmm. of a maybe classic pedigree in my mind with the sire, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Kind of an odd Wesley, War yeah. uh, Wesley Ward horse now with Kent Sweezy. Uh, we'll wrap things up, and uh, in sticking with uh, certainly high-profile Barnes, even looking at Mike Maker, who's got a busy day ahead of him,
you've got Kristoff, you've got Chad in the nightcap as we uh, do end the uh, the program on the main going a mile. I wound up taking Chad's horse, the seven super highway. We just flipped in the exact <laughs> with two likely, when it's all said and done, barns that'll wind up in the Hall of Fame. I would think so. And they're, they actually look a bit similar in this spot in that both of them were beaten by double digit lengths and they're taking a dropping class from special weight to claiming. But we'll see. I think this just could be a good spot for either one of these runners. And I feel very comfortable with just these two wrapping things up. Sounds good. Speaking of two, we've got 22 minutes on the clock. We've got our man upstairs, Pete Aiello, standing by. Ronnie offsite. Glad you're with us, everybody, in that first race coming up at about 12.50 Eastern. Up next, Pete, with those scratches and changes.